What's up, you guys? What's up? What's up? What's up? It's Real Talk Wednesday. Hey, yeah, Real Talk Wednesday. I decided I'm going to do my Real Talk again in my bathroom, but I've just finished, damn near almost finished my makeup because I've also decided for today, I hope I'm looking in the fucking camera. I say this to you guys every week, so whatever. But I've also decided today that I am going to review some synthetic wigs. Okay. It's my eyebrows look all right, y'all. Why does this one seem a little bit longer? Why? You know what I want to ask you guys real quick? And I know somebody's got an answer to this. And I hope to God it ain't a fucking slick ass answer. Why do your eyebrows always want to give you a problem? Like, why? I know I cannot possibly be the only one in the world who sometimes has to fight with their eyebrows. Like, and you know, I'm going to tell you something. And you're probably going to laugh your fucking asses off about this, but... The eyebrow actually was not too long. It's this one that I always have a problem with because there's a freckle right here that makes it appear as an eyebrow once I draw the line down a little bit. So, yeah, you see that little dot. Sometimes people might think, oh, my eyebrow's coming off or, you know, it's the freckle that always fucks it up for me. Also, some people do ask me, how do I get my eyebrows straight or whatever? Bitch, I follow the dots on my face, okay? Y'all y'all might think that I'm crazy, but I actually follow the dots on my motherfucking face, okay? It's like connect the dot. I do have a few up here that I can use as leverage of when and how to draw my motherfucking brows on. If that shit is too high, then I, from that dot, I know, girl, you best to fix that eyebrow. You see what I'm saying? So I get to play connect the dot on my face. But I hope the lighting is okay because for some strange reason, I feel like it's just really, really not. I just feel like it's not working out for me in my favor right now. And I'm kind of depressed about that right now. I don't know. But anyway, so, you know, it's Real Talk Wednesday. Um, you know, it's Real Talk Wednesday. Um, I'm going to do some videos today on... What the fuck? Shit seems like it just be dying around here. I'm going to do some videos today on some cheap wigs, some cheap synthetic wigs, okay? Yes. And in case you guys want to know which one it is, because y'all so nosy and I love y'all for that. Woo! Hold on, hold on, bitch. Hold on. Why is everything fucking up real quick around me? Why is my little ring light that's on my desk like, oh, God. This is like an embarrassing fucking moment. All right? Nothing ever works out in my favor. If you guys can see how the fuck I got this rigged up right now in my makeup desk so that I could talk to you guys while I do my makeup and do a real talk video, you know, I'm trying to accomplish, like, a thing, uh, several things at one fucking time. Like, seriously, I'm trying to accomplish, like, several things at one fucking time. And, you know, this definitely ain't no fucking tutorial. Oh. But, you know, I, ooh, I am trying to accomplish more than normal here. I think I'm I'm getting beside myself a little bit, you know. But it is what it is. But anyway, so you know what I'm saying? I am going to try to accomplish doing extra videos today. So I'm gonna do this one by Sensational. This is really short. It's cute. You know, y'all bitches could wear this all year round, you know. I'm saying not bitch in a mean way though. Y'all y'all is my bitches. Like seriously. And for those of you guys who don't like the word bitches, then y'all is my friends, okay? Same shit. Same motherfucking shit. Let's not get besides ourselves. Um, then I got, um, I think I, I'm going to make a one video into, three videos into one. And it's going to be the Janet Collection haul video. And I'm going to try the wigs on, okay? But I'm going to put three of them on. Not five like I was intentionally going to do. We're just going to do three because, you know. So I'm going to do three videos today. This real talk, which don't really take me much time. Another one, and then another one. Before wigs. So that's why I got my hair like this today, okay? In case y'all like, why? This is why I got my... Listen, because I'm going to tell y'all something. And this is just me. This is just me. Thank you, Dunkin' Donuts. Hello. Mm. Well, not really thank you, because I bought my own shit. But this really me. I'm trying to fix this. Hold on, Hold on guys. Okay, that's better. This is really me. Like, listen, what the fuck was I going to say? I don't even remember. But listen, let me tell y'all something real quick. Y'all know that I was, um, you know, complaining about my weight. You, you know, I, I think, like, listen, let me tell y'all something. Everybody complain about their weight. Even the skinniest bitches be like, oh, my God, I weigh too much. You be like 120 pounds, bitch, and you sitting here talking about you weigh too much. 
are you serious right now? Like, you cannot possibly tell me that your fucking thin ass weighs too much. But I ain't got nothing against... Did I put on... I forgot to put some on my face, but whatever. Uh, my primer, but that's okay. Um, I'm not ragging on the skinny people because, you know, it's just the size. It's just the size. I'm not saying anything's wrong with it. But, you know, as women and people in general, we can... Cons- You know, we always seem to find something wrong with ourselves. I said that to y'all last week. So anyway, you know, I haven't worked out in a couple of days because I've actually been really sick. Thanks to my grandson, I've caught his illness from, you know, his little pre-K school. And actually, I didn't catch it. My husband caught it because he always liked to hang out with him and play with him and stuff. And, you know, at that age, they don't ever uh, cover their mouths. Well, they do. He do, but not like, like the way I would prefer him to cover his mouth. But you know, whatever. He caught the cold. And then of course my husband got it. And then like a few days later, I got it from my husband. So anyway, and I can't help that. We sleep in the same bed. We always cuddle up kissing. So, you know, it is what it is. But anyway, so I haven't worked out because I have been really sick. So if I sound a little congested, I do apologize, but I have been sick. Um, And now I'm feeling a lot better. So let me tell y'all real quick. Finally, the day that I finally started feeling better, okay, I decided I had wanted me a drink. And this was on Saturday, Saturday evening. Now, I was going to go and get me a drink from this, you know, this little grill place, um, native New Yorker, chicken wing grill, whatever. But I didn't want to go sit there by myself. And the reason why I was going to go by myself is because I was irritated with my husband. Not like people don't have roses and petals every fucking day in a relationship. You know, I sometimes get irritated. You know what I'm saying? And I noticed that if I don't put on my motherfucking patch and forget it, you know, because I do have to change it every three to four days and I forget to put back on, I put a fresh one on because I didn't showered and cleaned up that sticky area. And I went the whole day, two days without it. I realized that because no wonder why your your bitch ass April is sitting here crying and being emotional and mean to everybody. Not even mean, but just like non-tolerant. So that's the reason why I was going to go by myself. Because I just wanted to be rid of everybody for a few minutes. I didn't want to be bothered. I was just trying to just calm down. But so, you know, who the fuck wants to sit at the bar or at any type of restaurant and drink by themselves? Like, you know what I'm saying? So I decided to... Give me a little vodka and come home with it with some orange juice. I hid the shit because I don't want nobody to see it. Put it in my Wonder Woman water bottle thing. And I know I poured enough orange juice up in that motherfucker. Sat on the couch. Got the weed that I was making. Turned on Friday. You know, with Smokey. You know, bye Felicia. And, you know, I don't have cable, so I stream shit. You know, I have like, you know. I'll be watching the latest movies, okay? So, you know, I could I, I jailbroke into some shit. Like, not jailbroke in, but you know what I'm saying? I'll I be hacking into it or whatever, fixing it up for myself. So anyway, um, I'm sitting here and I'm watching Friday. I stream Friday. And um, because I was not about to buy that shit off of Amazon for fifteen dollars when I already had DVD, I got like two DVDs of that shit. So anyway, I streams it, and you know it comes up with different links. So I clicked the Google one because you know it's Google, it's faster. You ain't got nothing to worry about. You ain't gonna buffer. It's gonna come in really clear. And the movie's mad old. Okay, please tell me why I seen a whole different version of Friday. I'm like, it was the Friday. But it was like the uncut version. So there was mad scenes in there that was not in the movie. Like Felicia came and borrowed some chicken and a microwave and wanted to cook, to cook that shit. It was like some, some whole different shit when he got caught in the refrigerator and the father was like, you old, every time I come in the kitchen, you in the kitchen, in the goddamn refrigerator, eating up all the food. I want some of that chicken. I want some of those pig beets. I like collard greens. But he kept on going on and on and on after that. Before he even got to that part, he had started talking about his grapes. It was just like this crazy scene. So, you know, I was sipping and laughing, and I was like, what the fuck? I know this movie from heart to heart because I have seen it like 200 times. So I'm sipping, and I feel like I don't feel tipsy, but I'm like, let me go to the bathroom. So I get up to use the bathroom, and my head is spinning. Girl, let me tell y'all, when I put my head down, I had to call for my husband to come on the couch with me. I was done. That night, I was done. I don't know 
what the fuck happened, but I was out of it for like three hours. I felt like a like such a loser, okay? Like I have I don't really drink and I definitely don't drink anymore. Like I used to like to drink, but I wouldn't drink to get drunk. But you know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't even tipsy. It just fucked with my stomach so bad that probably because I didn't eat, but I listen, everything that I ate the day before and the day before, that was all in that little trash bin. And I had lost three pounds. The next morning when I woke up, it just I was three pounds lighter. Okay. So that's why I wanted to share with y'all motherfuckers. But other than that, you know, it is what it is. By the time y'all see this, it'll be Wednesday. I'll be on my way to court with my son, in case y'all don't remember. I did tell y'all that he has to go to sentencing on the 24th of July. So he will be doing six months. And right now, me and him are not on the best terms because, you know, like I explained to you guys a million and five times, I get tired of telling somebody the same fucking thing over and over and over and over and over again. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand you are a young adult, but how many mistakes are you going to constantly make in your life? The same mistake to where somebody has to keep constantly having a discussion with you about it. After you've made that mistake a numerous of times, the person is dumb tired. They don't want to talk about the shit no more. They've had enough. You know, you come to me one time. Let's let's just use this as an example. I'm just gonna make some shit up. Oh, I took my car to to Juan and he messed it up. That's the first time Juan messed your car up, and I told you about it. Second time you go back to Juan, he messed it up again, and I say something again. The third time you go back to Juan, he done messed it up again. Now listen, if it were me, the first time I'm probably not gonna fuck with you no more because it's my car and it's not cheap. You know what I'm saying? But hey, sometimes relationships are relationships, regardless if it's for a car or for a stack of groceries or, you know what I'm saying? It's a relationship. Okay. And sometimes you build the trust in the person that, Hey, I know you're going to write me after you wrong me. So basically if I'm telling you something like, yo, you shouldn't keep going to him, you know, you're wasting your money. Now I have to help you get it fixed or, you know what I'm saying? Like, like about a third or fourth time, I'm tired of telling you. Okay. So what do I do? I stop giving you the advice because obviously you're not taking the shit. Okay. And that may not even have been the best example. So let's use this one, for example. And it's not even an example. It's truth. If I've been told you and been told you, don't bring that shit in my house. Don't, don't bring no alcohol in my house. Cause you under a certain age, cause you don't see me bringing in here. I, I, when I brought that vodka in here the other day, Nobody didn't see me, and I hit the shit. And it was mad small, and I I hit the shit. Okay? So nobody even knew I was drinking anything until I had to tell my husband. Yeah. Because I really don't want nobody to know. But here's the thing. If you're 19 and 20, and I've been told you, you cannot drink, you're definitely not legal. And for two, don't disrespect my house by bringing the shit in, sneaking it in, putting it under your bed, putting it behind a chair, trying to hide it in my garage every time I keep finding out about the shit. And then on top of that, I got to keep telling you, stop doing certain dumb shit because you just stay in trouble. And here it is. I'm the one that has to dig you out, bail you out the motherfucking trouble. So... Basically, you know not to bring no shit up in my motherfucking house when it comes to alcohol, okay? Because I don't give a fuck if you did just turn 21. That don't mean you grown. And if you is grown, then you know what grown people, what grown people do these days is grown people have their own shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, grown-ups don't live at home with their mother and father. They don't live at home with their parents. They live on their own because that's what a grown motherfucker do. I mean, that's what I thought, at least. But it's, it's so fucking sad sometimes when these young-ass people be feeling like, well, I'm grown, I'm grown, I'm grown. Just because you're a motherfucking number does not make you, solidify you as being grown. Y'all motherfuckers be so ungrown half the time, y'all don't even know what grown is, which makes me fucking irritated. So, here's the thing. Now, like I told you guys, he got a new job, okay? He makes pallets, you know pallets and shit. I said, got your second check, Okay, the first one wasn't that great because, you know, you just start, you got to build up your, your hours and shit. So this is your second one, all right? Now, you work Monday through Saturday, at least you was, and now it's back to Monday through Friday, okay? So you already know you owe me money. 
And I'm not the type of person that's like, oh, well, I want it all back at once. Not to not to my kids. Like, give me what you can, but I need you to know that I'm not going to keep dishing out my money for your fucking mistakes. I'm going to need my shit to fuck back. Now I'm going to need my shit back. You're supposed to be giving me my money back four months ago. Now you're making no effort. So when you get your first check, you told me, oh, I'm going to pay you your money back for the Mexico trip. Okay, because you went to Mexico, not me. And you lost and got your money taken there, not me. You got robbed by the Mexican policia, whatever the fuck they call, not me. So I had to pay you some money. Okay, cool, whatever, but I'm going to need my shit the fuck back. $310, I'm going to need it back. You didn't make no effort to give me anything back. You lost your job. Okay, you can't give me nothing back. And I'm a very patient motherfucker. When um you get it and you give it to me, then cool, because y'all is my kids. I'm not going to drill y'all. I don't really need y'all shit, but I'm trying to teach y'all responsibility. And once you tell me you're going to pay me my shit the fuck back, you need to be a man of your word. This is what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what the amount of it is or what it is. It's the principle. It's the principality in this shit. You know what I'm saying? It's the principle. You be a man of your motherfucking words. Stand up. Be a man of your word. If you tell somebody you're going to do something and you got them and you're going to pay them back, you be a man of your word. That's all I'm saying. So first check come. You know what I'm saying? I loaned you $50 while you was at work. Okay? This was two weeks ago. I didn't get any. I didn't get money back. I didn't even get, oh, hey, I got my first check. It's a little bit low, but... You know, I got you. I didn't even get nothing like that. I ignored the shit. You know what I'm saying? Because, listen, I'm not going to come to you and keep asking you for my shit. Because you know you owe me. What the fuck do I look like coming to you talking about when you're going to pay me back for money you owe me? Nigga, you borrowed the shit. Why should I have to come to you and ask you if you borrowed the shit? And like I said, I'm not petty with my kids. I'm not trying to take all your money. But at least make some effort. And if you ain't got it, hey, I'm, I'm more, I'm very... Very, very, very understanding. If you ain't got it, hey, ma, I ain't got it this week. All right, cool. Just give me a heads up. Let me know. Don't just dub me, dub my shit, and act like you don't give two fucks. So first check, I didn't get no, like, hey, hey, girl, hey, bitch. You know what I'm saying? I don't got your money right now, but you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm fine with that. I, listen, I'm not trying to leave nobody broke, okay? So I didn't get, you know what I'm saying, no notification from my son like, yo, I ain't got it. But I did see you come in this motherfucker with your first check and you had mad takeout every day. You know, you had shit for yourself. All I was asking back was for the 50 I loaned you two weeks prior. Not the two, not the, not the 310 from the Mexico trip back in March. Okay. But the $50 I had loaned your ass like a week ago while you was working. Okay. I didn't get that back. I didn't even get, hey, here's $20. Or, hey, here's 10 bitch. Or, oh, well, look, bitch, I ain't got it right now. I didn't get nothing. All I, I got was, oh, this nigga got takeout. Oh, he ordered Grubhub. Did that nigga just get motherfucking Chipotle delivered by, delivered by DoorDash? Hold the fuck up. Did this motherfucking delivery service just deliver IHOP pancakes and motherfucking Mexican takeout too? Where the fuck is my plate up in this bitch? I don't see shit for me. Mm, okay. You know what I'm saying? That's how I'm feeling. That's what I was feeling. That's exactly what I was motherfucking going through, okay? But I ain't say shit because, listen, you're going to dig yourself into a motherfucking hole. You ain't going to dig me with you, but you're going to dig yourself into a hole. So I ain't see shit. I mean, I seen shit, but I ain't see shit for me. I ain't get no text message like, hey, girl, I got you. Hey, bitch, I got you. Hey, ma, I got you on the next go round of check. I didn't, I didn't get nothing of that. It was just like, oh, hey, how you doing? What's up, bitch? Oh, yeah, I'm eating good. Uh, okay, whatever. As long as you eating, then I, okay. You know what I'm saying? Because, listen, here's my thing. I'm not coming to you and asking you for my motherfucking money back, all right? I don't give a fuck what it is you borrow. I shouldn't have to go to you and ask you. That's not what you do to people. You be a stand-up motherfucker, okay? So I didn't get no money back that week. Now, Friday, this Friday goes by because it's every two weeks a paycheck. So Friday goes by this past Friday. He's telling me, well, you know, I probably won't be home after work because he works till 1230 at night. I'm going to go to Phoenix, because we live in Phoenix, but we live in Avenue, to my friend's house. Oh, okay, whatever. Nigga, you got paid. The nigga didn't come back until the next day, which was Saturday. Got three pairs of sneakers, got some clothes and shit, 
came in here lit, like, you know, a little saucy and shit, showing us all the goods that you just picked up from the local mall, okay? Not once did you come and hand me something, but you did text me and, and call me and ask me how much I owe you, and I told you how much you owed me. Well, I'm just trying to have fun this week, you know, because, you know, this is probably my last weekend because I got to go to court on Wednesday. And I'm just trying to have fun. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm going to need my money back. And I didn't say that. I said, yeah, I understand. We all trying to have fun. I said, I'll be trying to have fun too, but when I got to bail people out, you know, saying that's my money. So, well, I know my, but this ain't the bail out. This ain't the money for the bail. It doesn't matter. It's about responsibility. When you owe somebody something, you give them what you owe them. You don't just go around showboating them. How the fuck would you like it if I owe one of y'all bitches, like, money, and then y'all see me going on a shopping spree? And You know what I'm saying? Like, who the fuck does that? That would piss you off. So, you know, I, I still didn't say nothing, but I did say something. I said, this is how much you owe me because you asked. And listen, I understand you're about to go in. I'm not asking for all your check, but I would like at least half my money back. Okay. All right, Ma, I'm going to give you half your money back today. So he comes in. He got all these little bags for him and shit. He got his little friend outside waiting for him in the car, you know what I'm saying, who, who, who rolled up with him. Talking about he left his car, his wallet in the car. Okay, nigga, you can go get your shit because it's in the car. The car ain't down the street. And if it was, that I could care less. I want my motherfucking money. He's like, I'm going to come back through with it. Okay, whatever. Now... All right, because I want to see the story. I'm not about to beg nobody for my shit the fuck back. So later on that night, not even later on that night, at 12-something Saturday, remember, mind y'all, I told you guys that I had got real sick Saturday night from drinking. So after I was fine and I had threw my motherfucking brains out after three hours of throwing my brains out, I was fine after I threw up. You know, I was a little throat was sore, but I was cool. I'm still in the living room with my husband. It's like 12-something at night. Why is this nigga coming in here at 12 o'clock at night trying to tell me about how he got robbed with the blicky? Now, first of all, first of all, let me tell y'all something. Don't come to me as a fucking child and not me a parent and use no street slang to me. Yo, he pulled the blicky out of me. If somebody pulled out a gun on you, say the word gun. Don't come through to me with talk about, oh, I pulled, they pulled out the blicky, but I'm Gucci. Hello? Who the fuck do you think I am? Yo, I had to say what the fuck I had to say. Because now you're telling me you got robbed? Okay, you're right. See, this is what I'm talking about with people, Okay. This is the shit I'm talking about. So at this moment in time, like I said, I'm not going to continuously keep talking to you. You don't already burn your motherfucking bridges with me. I'm going to always be available to help you out. But let me tell you something. Don't ask me about no motherfucking money or anything you owe me. Still didn't have my money. Didn't even have half or the half to give me. You tried to give me back a quarter of what you owed me. Not even a quarter, a third, all right? But not even half. And then the next motherfucking day, you try to text me and say, did I give you $100? You know damn well you didn't give me $100. So my words are very limited right now with him because I'm tired of people, not even people, but I'm tired of these kids, not even all these kids, but the ones that I do have that are older, thinking that I'm the motherfucking Bank of America, okay? I don't give a fuck who you are. When you know you owe somebody some shit, you pay them the fuck back, okay? When you tell somebody you're going to give them their shit back, you be a man of your word. You don't just keep trying to borrow and borrow and borrow shit from somebody and don't even bother paying it back, and then you come, and you come up in their face with sneakers and sneakers upon sneakers and just show both that shit in their face while they're the ones that pay all the motherfucking bills and shit around here? Like, who the fuck do you think you are now when I'm talking about this shit? I'm getting really angry. Because let me tell y'all something. Don't come to me with this boy cry wolf story and be like, now, because you see that I'm not really speaking to you. I don't really have much to say because, listen, I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm. This is what I'm feeling. Like, listen, you ain't got to worry about me ever loaning you nothing, okay? Because, for one, I done held and lend out my hand enough times, and all you fucking have done is take advantage of it. It's one thing when you try to help somebody out, and then they come to you with these sob stories, and you believe them. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to be the first to say that I was a fool to believe half the shit that my child was telling me. But, you know, it's... It's not even being a fool and being stupid. It's out of love and concern. But then after a while, you know what I'm saying, you get to the point where, yo, hold the fuck up. This nigga is trying to play me. Okay, all of the shit that he's saying is suspect and it don't even sound right. And every time there's an issue with what the shit that you've done and the behavior that you've displayed, you want to come with some sob story about why you displayed this fucking attitude or this behavior. And like, I'm not falling for that shit. That's the boy that cried motherfucking wolf. So now you're telling me you got robbed. 
but you only got a third of the money. Let me tell you something. If somebody rob you with a gun, do you think they're going to be so kind to you and say, well, you know what? I'm going to leave you with this much money so that way you can get through the week. Or I know you got to pay your mama back, so I'm going to leave you with this. Nah, nigga, they're going to take all your motherfucking money, okay? But on top of that, don't come to me talking about, yeah, I'm Gucci. I'm, I'm like, are you all right? Yeah, I'm Gucci. Oh, they pulled the... Bl- I'm, first of all, I'm not for the street slang. I'm 45 years old and you's my child. You are my child. Don't disrespect me by talking to me with street slang. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little bit too old school and maybe I'm not, but I just feel like this. As a parent, don't come to me on some fucking rah-rah gangster slang shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, I'm I'm old school like that. I'm, I would never approach my mom and be like, yo, Ma Dukes, what's up? You Gucci today? My mother probably look at me like, what the fuck did you just say to me, April? And I'll probably be like, I don't even know, Miss Pam. Okay, but I feel like yo, you this a boundary in this motherfucker. Don't come to me talking street slang. Like who the fuck does that? Like grow up. It's time to grow up. So tomorrow is D Day, and I, you know what? True indeed. I really don't have two words, and I'm really very disappointed and upset and shit. And you know, it's like this. I get tired of having to repeat my fucking self. It's ridiculous. Why the fuck should I have to keep repeating myself? And then when you get caught up in the midst of shit, you want to come with me with your tail tucked between your legs with some sob story that doesn't even fucking relate to what the fuck is going on. Like you want to use shit as an excuse. I'm not with the excuses and I'm good. I'm over it. I'm off that train right now and I'm not falling for any type of dumb shit. It is what it is. Why the fuck did somebody, did the Grubhub just pop up on my my screen? Did someone say hungry $10 off? What the fuck? Y'all know what I was talking about? But like, listen, I'm over it. So I'm, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm over. I'm off that train. I feel sorry and sympathy for people because you know something? It's sad to say that, like I told you guys all the time, Family be the ones that will fuck you in your ass and leave you fucking hemorrhoiding. Seriously. Family be the one that do it to you all the time. And that sucks. It really does suck, but it's the truth. It's motherfucking truth. So I have learned to just, you know, become very, very aware of the bullshit that is surrounding me and the shit that is being told to me. I'm not about to keep falling for the okie doke. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna keep. I'm. I'm not gonna be naive anymore, and I'm not even gonna say that I was being naive to some of the fucking store excuses that I heard. But I was being sympathetic, and I was being concerned, and I was trying to be helpful. But it's not. It's not so. I'm not. I'm not being helpful. I'm just irritating my own skin. You know what I'm saying? Like seriously, I'm not being helpful by continuously being there. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes when you tell someone something over and over again, it's like, listen, I'm going to just let you figure this shit out on your own because obviously you, you, you could care less and you could give two fucks about what the fuck I have to say and how I'm elaborating on a situation and how I'm trying to get you out of the trouble. But obviously you don't get it. So, you know, it's going to be your turn one day to, to figure this shit out because you know what? Your ass cannot continue on doing and going the way you are. So, yeah, I'm not on the best of terms. And sorry, but not sorry. You know, sometimes when you make your bed, nigga, you got to lay in that shit. And you're going to be laying and festering in it for six months. And I hope you get time to think about the shit. You know what I'm saying? No no mother wants their child to go to jail. I mean, some parents do want their children to go to jail. However, that child that they probably want to go to jail is probably a mass murderer, a rapist, or probably some real foul person. But, you know what I'm saying? Nobody really wants their kids to go to jail, you know? So... And of course, I don't, but I've warned you, I've told you, and not only have you wronged me, but you have wronged others, and I'm just like over it, okay? I'm over it, and I'll be the first to tell you, yeah, my child is going to jail for six months, but I told you guys already, right here on YouTube, I've been told you guys, I've been was telling him, and you don't ever want to listen, so therefore, what? Now you're going to have to pay the piper, you know? Pay the motherfucker piper. So that will be tomorrow, which which will be Wednesday. By the time you guys see this, I will be there. And, you know, I will keep you guys updated or whatever on the next Real Talk. But, yeah, that's what I'm facing tomorrow. Because, you know, it's really Tuesday right now. But, you know, it is what it is. Hey, you got to own up. Sometimes you got to own up to your shit. You can't keep going on and on in life and not owning up to your shit. There's going to come a time in everybody's life where they're going to have to own up to their shit. Straight up. So don't think and don't think that 
you keep doing shit to people that it's going to be okay and you can continuously get away with the shit because it's not, it doesn't work like that in the real world. Eventually, the shit that you keep continuously doing to yourself and to people will definitely catch up with you. And then what's going to happen is you're going to be left out in the cold with no motherfucking coat on, no snow boots on, and you're going to freeze your ass off, okay? And I tried to help you not freeze your ass off, but obviously you didn't care to hear that, so... I'm just saying. So that's what I'm dealing with and and shit. And I'm okay with that. Like, no, I'm not going to come out crying out of court. I'm going to be fine. Of course I'm going to worry. And of course I'm going to, you know what I'm saying, say you got this. Am I going to visit? I don't really know. You know what I'm saying? Because, I, listen, maybe I will because sometimes you got to talk to a person in a different environment. Maybe the situation that you're in while you're there, maybe that'll work for you. And listen and open up your ears. I don't know, because you'll have time to think. I don't know. But I will say this. If I continuously tell you something for your own good and you don't want to listen to me, then there's nothing I can do for you. So anyway, moving on. In case you guys are wondering what this is, listen. I told y'all I was on my eating healthy kick. Mangoes and peaches. And it smells so divine from Walmart. I love their produce. Walmart's peaches and mangoes are to die for. Their produce is really, really good. So I'm just telling you guys that. Some of y'all bitches be like, I don't eat Walmart. But I'm telling you, their produce is good, okay? So, yeah. So we're going to just get into this real talk real quick because I got to do these videos, okay? And I'm only going to do one because I've already talked you guys' ear off for 30 minutes, which makes no fucking sense. But you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I hope you guys appreciate the fact that I talked your ears off. And, yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Oh. I just want to rant real quick because I probably did, but I want to say this. Listen, let me tell y'all something. First of all, I'm not a motherfucking machine. I don't push out motherfucking videos out my ass. I have a life besides YouTube and making wigs. You know what I'm saying? And I know this is not towards you guys, but some to you guys that are watching me who have subscribed to me and have asked me to do video reviews for you. Now, when I do a video review for one of my subscribers, it's always free because that's about love and support. And I know that y'all have loved and supported me over the years, but... If you are a vendor that is well established, you damn right I'm gonna charge you because I have things to do. But when it comes to my my subscribers, I don't charge y'all because I just don't want to. I don't have it in me to charge you guys. I don't have it in my heart because everybody has to start off somewhere. But here's the thing: that means that that's the video that you ain't getting charged for, which means it's a free video. However, please don't motherfucking keep emailing me and commenting on other videos talking about, well, you know, I just was wondering when the video was going to be up. If I got the wig like two to three weeks ago, bitch, don't fucking stress me out because I send my policy to everybody. However, for my subscribers, I really don't send my policy. But I feel like this. If somebody is doing you a favor, don't fucking rush them and breathe down their neck because I hate shit like that. Like, don't breathe down my motherfucking neck, okay? Because for one... Your wig, your hair, your makeup, your product is not the best thing in this world, okay? Second of all, if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it for you. Third of all, if I tell you I'm going to do that shit, I'm going to motherfucking do it, but don't fucking keep emailing me and leaving comments on other sh unnecessary shit that ain't unnecessary. When you fucking get a response, you get a response. And this does not even just go to subscribers. It goes to companies in general. Like, if I send you my policy and it says, like, five to six weeks for your video to go up, okay, or, you know what I'm saying, or three weeks. Don't fucking email me two, three days after I done got the email, the, the, the product. You know what I'm saying? Talking about, oh, I see you got the product three days ago. Or, oh, girl, I seen you got that product three days ago when you're going through the video. Did you really just fucking hit me up because you seen the tracking was delivered and now you ask me when the video is going to be reviewed? Like, motherfuckers, stay off my back and stop breathing down my neck. OK, and I'm not saying this to be mean, but I'm just saying this because there are quite a few of you guys out there that be harassing me or fucking emailing me. And I be really just ignoring the email. Sometimes I don't respond. I don't respond because, listen, if I told you I'm going to do it, and now you're going to email me every day, bitch. I'm definitely not going to email you back. Not that I'm going to keep your shit because I damn sure don't need it. But to the fact where I'm going to ignore your emails because I'm not going to let you irritate me. But it, then it starts to become an irritation when you want other videos leaving comments. Like, come on now. Let's be real about the shit. If I told you I'm going to do something, I'm going to motherfucking do it. Just don't harass me. 
And with that being said, if you had a real talk that you want me to talk about, you can send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, real talk, so that way I know it's a real talk. If you want to change the names of the people that's in the email, then go ahead and do so by letting me know. If you don't, then 99.9% of the time, bitches, I'm going to, to change it. Okay, baby zaddies, I'm going to change it. Like Maury says, 99.9%. So, let's get into this real talk. Okay. Okay. Hi, April. My name is Kim. I've changed the name. I'm 19, about to be 20. I work full time and I go to school part time, which I pay for myself. My father agreed to pay for my school, but then gave me an ultimatum, ultimatum, an ultimatum to leave my boyfriend. So that's why I'm paying for school myself. He doesn't want me to have a boyfriend. By the way, he is a Jehovah Witness, which I have grown up in all my life. But as I've gotten older, I wanted to explore and see other things that the world has to offer. Okay. But my father is making my life very difficult. When I try to go places, he tells me, so as I was saying before I was really, well, nicely interrupted my husband call because, you know, I'm on my phone right now. Okay, so it says here, I will share his name. Okay. Uh, my father is making my life very difficult. When I try to go places, he tells me that if I sleep outside of the house, I should stay there and that he doesn't agree with my lifestyle. So basically he says I can do whatever I want since I'm grown, but I can't stay in his house. April, I really don't want to move out, but I feel like I have no choice, and the only place where I can go is my boyfriend's house. I am from a different country, so I don't have any family, and my mother doesn't live in the same country as me. I'm really fed up. What should I do? So, basically, Kim is um, 20. She's about to be 20, so she is going to school, and she pays for her school, and she works full-time. Now, her father did say, I will pay for your schooling, but you're going to have to break up with your boyfriend. Because he doesn't want her to have a boyfriend. Because he's a Jehovah Witness, basically, I guess. You know what I'm saying? And that is kind of like their religion. I'm not a Jehovah, but I, you know, read, bitch. I read. <laughs> okay? So, he doesn't want her to have a boyfriend. And being that she's with her boyfriend, and I guess she cares for him enough, she is like, well, then I'll just pay for my own schooling. That's what grown-ups do. Now, her father's also telling her he is not fond of her lifestyle. If she goes out and she sleeps somewhere else, he needs she needs to stay there. You don't sleep anywhere else outside of the house. So you can't be spending the night outside nowhere, girl. You got to sleep in your own house. Um, and if that's the case, that she want to spend the night somewhere else, regardless if it's at her girlfriend's house, her grandmama's house, her cousin's house, whoever house, April house, she best to stay there. If you want to sleep there, then stay there. So she's trying to figure out what should she do. She don't want to leave his house, but she ain't got no options. Boo! It's called being grown up, girl. Get your grown up on. You pay for school. You got a job. You know what I'm saying? The only place that you can go to and live is at your boyfriend's house. Now, I don't know what your relationship is like with your boyfriend. And I'm not saying, bitch, move in with your boyfriend because you're only 19 going on 20. Not saying that you should be living with your boyfriend. You know what I'm saying? Because you're still a young adult. So you got to get out and venture into the world. You want to get to know the world. You want to live your life. But you also want to explore your options and also explore the educational world. So your ass could get a really good job in the real world. You know what I'm saying? Real quick. Now, here's the thing. You ain't got to live with Papa because he got his own shit he dealing with. He don't want you living there if you can't sleep at the house. He got his own religion. And that's great. You know what I'm saying? Even though she was born into being a Jehovah Witness because that's what her father is. And I'm not knocking any Jehovah Witnesses because I have friends. Well, I had a friend that was a Jehovah Witness, you know what I'm saying? So I know, you know what I'm saying? I know what their lifestyle is like, you know what I'm saying? She didn't agree with the shit that I did. She didn't like my cursing, but that's cool, you know what I'm saying? Not everything is for everybody, bitch. Just because I don't curse, you don't curse, that shit might not be for me, and the shit that I do might not be for you. But here's the shit, Kim, I think she said her name was Kim. Yes, Kim, you 19, 20, whatever, you got a job, you, you know what I'm saying? You want to venture out. Listen. I'm not really sure what the reasons are why you don't want to live with your father, but I'm pretty sure I do know the reasons, which may be that the fact is you don't want to be too grown, okay? You don't want to be too grown about living on your own. Being too grown is paying bills, okay, and caring for your responsibilities and yourself. And now you got to choose whether you want to be ungrown, okay, or grown. 
Now, the ungrown part is you live at home with daddy. You let him pay for your schooling. You break up with your boyfriend. You live in daddy's house and you follow daddy rules. The grown up, that's the ungrown version. The grown up part is you move out. You become a responsible, mature, responsible grown up. And you pay for your own shit. Okay? And you live your life. And you be responsible while you live in your life. Not doing dumb shit in the street. Because that don't make you grown. That's the grown person version. Now me, per se, even if my finances weren't that great, and I might, you know what I'm saying, make it ends meet, I might have to make some type of sacrifices. If I am ready to be an adult and be grown up in the world, and then I'm going to do and put my best foot forward, and I'm going to strive to do what I need to do to survive out here in the world. Now, Kim... You 19, 20, I was 19 when I had to move out of my mom's house too, okay? And I'm going to be honest and tell you, no, it was not the best fucking Dora Explorer adventure that I really was fucking trying to take on, but I was able to live and I was able to figure out what I needed to do for me and my son, and I was able to mature a little bit more versus staying at my mama's house and trying to leech and live off of her and only have to pay somewhat of a little bit of bills. You know, as I got older and shit and got more mature and more grown up, I figured out shit for myself. It ain't an easy path. Ain't nobody going to be able to just walk out there in the real world, especially if they're young and haven't experienced this, and it's going to fall into your lap. It's not. You're going to have to figure this shit out every single day sometimes, okay? And with that being said, this is what's called being grown up, okay? We got to grow up sometimes. Everybody always dependent on somebody else to help them, to hold their hand, and to tell them what to do. That's fine. As a parent, we do want to help our children. We do want to hold their hand. We do want to give them the right advice, okay? And we do want to see them do great in life. However, sometimes we got to step back from that because we have done it so much that how we helping is not helping. You see where I'm coming from? Because I've, I've already been there and done that and I'm in there, okay? Yeah. Helping sometimes is not helping, okay? You make the situation even worse sometimes when you constantly help them. And it sucks because you feel like you're doing good because you love them and you're trying to be there for them. But in the long run, it's fucking them up, okay? Especially if you keep and keep and keep doing this shit. So this is why I'm saying to you guys that sometimes when we help so much, that helping is nothing but hindering them. And so sometimes... We even hinder ourselves with the facts that we don't want to go out there and be a part of the workforce or the real mature world. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got this boy, my son, telling my husband, well, I've been working 10 hours shifts. So fucking well, you act like you've been working this all your life and you need a vacation. Nigga, you've been working for like four weeks, three weeks. Get over yourself. That's what I call lazy. You think somebody's going to hand you something for the rest of your life and somebody's going to take care of you for the rest of your life? It don't even matter if you got a wife or whoever, you know what I'm saying, who got money. You still got to learn how to take care of yourself and fend for yourself. It's time to grow up. And I'm not trying to come at you hard, Kim, but I'm just telling you this. Listen to me, girlfriend. You young, you able, you can work. You can also pick up another job. It don't have to be outside the house. But what I'm trying to tell you is it's time to grow up. You don't have to depend on your father, and you damn sure don't have to depend on your boyfriend to go live with him. If that's something that you want to do and you need like an ego booster or confidence to be able to say to your father, listen, I'm just going to move out and I'm going to move with my boyfriend because that's what you want to do, then do that. That's what a grown-up does. Don't sit there and just decide, well, I don't know what to do, April. What's your advice? If that's what you want and that's what you expect of your life, life and that's what you're ready to do, you're ready to leave daddies and you're ready to move in with your boyfriend, then do that. That's that's you. I'm not telling you not to and I'm not telling you to, to. I'm telling you that we're going to take the grown-up approach and we're going to do a grown-ups do. You know what I'm saying? Don't feel like you owe anybody an explanation. Don't feel like you owe anybody any type of story or reasons of why you want to live with your dad or reasons why you want to live with your boyfriend. If you want something in life, you do that. OK, this guy's nothing to do with if your mama don't live in this country. You has to do what's best for you, Kim. OK, straight up, no chaser, point blank, period. I can't tell you to go live with your father. I can't tell you to go live with your boyfriend. But what I can tell you to do is be grown up. And with me telling you to be grown up, that will be able to give you the right fucking choice. And you'll be able to make your own decision in life because a grown up do grown up shit. Let's all stop being ungrown sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like. 
I don't understand why everybody want to be so ungrown. And I know that's not a word, but I made this shit the fuck up. You can hashtag that shit ungrown if you want to, because it, people act like they ungrown. You know what I realized the other night from going through this bullshit with my child, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know how they be like, 40 is the 20 is the new 40 or 40, 30 is the new 20 or 40 is the new 20. Some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times people, women that be like, well, shit, I'm 40. That's the new 20. And they feel like, you know, saying they say this because they feel like they look lively. They look, you know what I'm saying? Youthful. So they'd be like, yeah, 40 is the new 20. You know what I'm saying? And this is the reason why some women say this. Like, yeah, I'm 40. Or I'm 30. It's the new 20, boo. Hey, what you next? You know what I'm saying? They feel like because they look youthful and shit that that's the new 20 because you're 40. Nah, bitch. I just thought about this shit the other day. 40 is the new 20. You know what that shit mean to me? 40 is the new 20 because there's a lot of motherfucking 40-year-olds out here in the world that is so immature and so ungrown that they got the mentality of a 20-year-old. That's why they say 40 is the new 20 because... People of my age ain't even smart enough and grown enough to accept responsibilities in life. So they act like 20-year-olds. That's how I'm taking it. That that may not be so, but if you think about that shit, like seriously, you got motherfuckers that's my age that even don't know how to motherfucking act. Like, are you serious? You 40-something years old and you acting like you just left college. Like, seriously? I'm trying to get something with my foot. You, you acting like, oh shit, can I even get this shit? <laughs> Maybe I should just get up and get it. You you sitting here acting like a 20-year-old at the age of 40, when in reality, your mentality, mind, is like so immature. That's what the fuck they mean. And like, I'm, I could sit here all day and talk to you about how motherfuckers act and how irresponsible people are and how like, you know what I'm saying, you cannot give your energy for all this negative shit, which is negative, okay? If your father expects you not to have a boyfriend, you 20 years old, girl, if you want to have a boyfriend, you have a motherfucking boyfriend. You cannot tell this young lady to not have a boyfriend. If she doesn't want to be a Jehovah Witness, she's a grown-up. She doesn't have to. And I'm not trying to offend any Jehovah Witnesses that's watching me. You know what I'm saying? So if you do think that shit, stop and <clears throat> right now because I'm not trying to defend, offend you guys, you motherfuckers. All right? I'm just telling you. If you're a Jehovah Witness and you come of age and you decide you don't want to be, then you ain't got to be. Same way I decided I don't want to go to church and be in a Baptist church. That's not even my religion. Okay? That wasn't what I was baptized or christened into. I'm not a Baptist. I'm a Methodist. And that's the elite. I don't have to believe anything what anybody tells me. When I get old enough, if I don't want to go to church, I didn't got to go to church. All right. If I don't want to believe in what y'all believe in, I don't have to. Same thing for Kim. She don't have to be a Jehovah Witness. If she want to celebrate motherfucking Christmas, let that bitch celebrate Christmas. Okay. She want to have a goddamn boyfriend. Let the bitch have a boyfriend. But when you decide to do things, you have to decide them and you have to do them on a grown-up level, okay? And if you are somewhere where you don't want to be, which is at your parents' house, and you feel like it's time for a bitch to move out, then you know what you do? You be a grown-up, and you move the fuck out. You don't need anybody's validation to do anything for yourself. Sometimes we do some fucked-up shit, we make some wrong decisions in life, but you know what? It's called life. And without mistakes and wrong decisions, bitch, you ain't never going to learn. You're never going to learn. You're not going to know how to deal with shit. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, we all got to live and learn. There's a mistake to be made for everybody, straight up. Y'all bitches think like, oh, I ain't trying to fuck up. I ain't trying to. Listen, it's life, bitch. You got to fuck up sometimes in order to get back on that motherfucking right train and get it back together. If you don't never fuck up in life, bitch, you ain't never going to learn shit. Look how many mistakes I done made in my life. I could just go on and on and on and on and tell y'all how many motherfucking mistakes I made. Do I make them now? Yes and no. I don't make the same dumbass mistakes, but I might make some in the future to come. It might not be the worst mistake. It might be something like, oh, I shouldn't have picked that size up. Oh, I shouldn't have used that lip gloss. Oh, I shouldn't have picked that wig or something like that. But I promise you, from all the mistakes and the life lessons that I've learned, I, I guarantee you, I ain't going to make no stupid, foolish mistake in my life because I'm too old for that. I'm too mature for that. I'm too grown for that. And I'm a little bit more knowledgeable, okay? But we all got to fall sometimes in order to get the fuck up. I'm just saying. And with that being said, Kim, make the wise decision and make the grown-up decision, but make the decision that's right for you. 
So, bitches, I got to go. You know what I'm saying? I got to do some videos. I love you. Stay diva and divolicious. Make sure you come subscribe, thumbs this video up, and all that good stuff. Yes, a bitch edges is lame for the synthetic wig video. Okay. Hmm. Oh, and it's so gloomy. I had to tell you guys that my room got so dark just now because it's it's going to rain. I'm so excited. Like, I know y'all like, bitch, you excited about rain. I am so excited about it about to rain. Like, it's about to storm. Like, yes. I'm like really, really excited. Only because it barely rains out here in Arizona. So I'm like so excited. Like, I might have to just light me up a blunt and stand in the balcony, on the balcony. You know what I'm saying? And catch some of that rain. Like, seriously, it's about to rain. It's mad gloomy and dark in my room. I'm so excited. I hope it don't mess up my videos either. Bye, you guys.